Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And for this episode, we watched Calendar Girls. So unsurprisingly, this was Helena's movie. <laughs> yeah, it is Helena's movie. Well, because it's got girls in it. Yes. Well, I mean, look, look. I, <laughs> yeah, I sort of caught this bird, on. It's got birds in it. It's got <laughs> birds in it. <laughs> Just like Dan's flat, yeah. it's got birds in it. <laughs> yeah, I like. I'd sort of caught part of this at Christmas, just gone. So that's all I'd seen. But I mean, yeah, a, 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 it's not a movie that I'd been like raring to go and see. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd like heard of it. I'd never seen anything to do with it. I just heard that it was a a film. Some people say was good. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure that me in 2003, which was, you know, yeah, 21 no. years ago, was like, oh yeah, I can't oh. wait to I'll go watch this movie and see Helen Mirren's tits. Or, you know, <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, I definitely didn't watch well. this in 2003. No. <laughs> um, this, I, I think I have fond memories of this, firstly and foremostly, because I definitely watched this whilst ill on the sofa. As oh, my yeah. either a uh, yeah. child or young, t- maybe a tween, early teen. Yeah. Prime sick movie. Yes, ah, uh, prime feel good, uh, but genuinely funny. I, I, I really enjoyed watching this. It's got a that level of British comedy that I really enjoy and find quite comforting. It's so gentle. It's yes. this film yeah. is so gentle. Like the the stakes are low. They're um, medium. Th- they're medium. like <laughs> they're medium level stakes. And the premise is hilarious. It's a true story, I think. Yeah, it is. I think more of a true story than the last true story movie we watched. (laughs) Yeah, weirdly enough. They actually got that guy back in to do this one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it's based on a true story. Yeah, it is. is. And I think it's, it's a hilarious premise. And yeah. they just actually, it's got the same one of my favorite things in films where everyone looks like they're having an absolute blast filming it and continually yeah, taking yeah, the piss right. out of each other. And I love that it, it opens with like how dull the Women's Institute is. I don't know if you guys have friends or family that have ever been to WI. No. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I, I've, I've never been personally, but this film doesn't like sell it. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's like this, this idea of like, so the Women's Institute, if people don't know, is like, um, it was basically like a society and uh, women would go and like meet regularly and do all sorts of like good causes. Like they do some fundraising, it was the sort of thing they'd, they'd have like um, bake sales and yeah. make jam and then they'd go to the, the country fairs. Um, it's, it's very like British countryside vibe. It's basically, if you don't want to be, a re- it's like a church group. Yeah, but it's not religious. It's it's more it's secular. Yeah, but it's the same. It's very similar vibe to like a church, like women's group or something like that. Yeah, it's it's like the most soft, like friendly. Yeah, it's essentially a reason for like people, to, women, to meet up. Yeah, and spend time with each other. Um, and, but it can of course get a bit cliquey and a bit bitchy, and a bit dull because it starts with the. It's like a. Oh, what the talk? Like they're they're every Thursday, people different. They're bringing in deaf, different people to to give the talk, and like they are scraping the barrel at yeah. this point. Yeah, you you've got that person that's like talking about how good broccoli is. Yeah, it's like the history of broccoli and uh, yeah. buttons and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and the main yeah. characters are pissing themselves laughing the whole time because of how ridiculous and boring it is. Um, yeah. And I just I love that. Like the the chemistry between. Julie Waters and Helen Mirren in this is this, fantastic. They are great, yeah. This film is... And also 100%. everyone's in this film, by the way. Everyone yeah, British every, every, is in every, this film. Every like, old, elderly British actor is in this film. It, it, this film is made on its ac- acting. Yeah. yeah like it's, it's a very, like, really simple plot. And it is made on, like, very normal, realistic acting, which I think is harder than like it seems harder than like big fantasy acting yeah these aren't these aren't huge character roles that they're doing these are sort of real well, i mean genuinely real people that they're, yeah. they're playing and it's a very 
real situation. I mean, yeah. it's an absurd situation, but it is it is real, and no one there's not like a even like the the pig bad guys, which is essentially you know the women's institute that the head of the women's institute. She isn't that bad. She gets on board no. with it at the end. And it, but they're also not like big. Ha- they're not like hammed up versions of real life. No, they're very. No, it's not like the the bit where they yeah. sort of have that argument at the end. It's not like massively over the top and ridiculous. It's so good. I yeah. love that argument. The argument goes hard, and I, I yeah. love it. This film also makes me cry. I just yeah, hundred percent. Did it make you guys cry? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I mean, not good, but good. <laughs> no, it's good. It's great. The yeah, that end argument. Oh, I want to talk to it when we get to it. Um, yeah. but this, this, if anyone has ever like lived in or spent any amount of time in like small British town, countryside, seaside town. And you've been like involved in local community stuff. This is a hundred percent accurate. This is the most accurate yeah. depiction <laughs> that I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's it, yeah, like she's part of the Women's Institute, sort of out of basically obligation now. Yeah, it's like you can't quit Women's Institute. Basically, she went because her mum went, and now she's still going. Still, yeah, yeah. Is it? It's a hundred. It's like the most. Whenever you do, if you do anything like this in real life, it's the most like blandly comforting thing you'll ever experience it's like it's very similar to hot fuzz but without the like murder cult yeah yeah (laughs) it's such a strange thing to experience but like it's lovely it's just very it's very like soft focused the whole thing it's great uh but yeah no if you've experienced this kind of kind of countryside stuff this is it and you get weird flashbacks (laughs) So, uh, yeah, oh god, I've been to I've been to village fairs like that, um, yeah. the one at the start. So the the sort of outline of the plot is um, that uh, there's two women in the women's that are in the women's institute, Chris and Annie, or Helen Mirren and Julie Waters, and they decide after Julie Waters' husband dies of cancer, they decide that they want to raise money for a new sofa for the relatives' room of the hospital because it's super uncomfortable. Which, which is kind of it comes up because neither of them want to talk about what's happening. Yeah, it's a way like of it, doing something without talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Because they're yeah. like, they there's like the the scene of them at the hospital, and they're just kind of awkwardly talking about how uncomfortable the sofa is, so yeah. they don't yeah, have to talk about. Like... They're like, oh, they'll need a second relative's room for the relatives of the people injured by how bad this sofa is. Yeah. It's, it was really sweet. It was really like well, really well done that bit. And then the rest of it just kind of spirals from there. Yeah. So the way they want to raise the money is by doing a calendar. But the last calendar they did was wasn't it like fields and flowers or something? And then this yeah, year they like wanted to do the bridges views of Napoli. Yeah. Yeah. This, br- yeah. The <laughs> the bridges of Napoli. This is um, after like so we they do um. The fate at the beginning, I think, is really good and worth talking about because you learn Uh, so much of their characters. Also, most important thing about that fate is the really big gorilla balloon. Yeah, (laughs) that was so (laughs) random. And the uh, the announce that's that's one of these things that's like like has really like helped. I think part of my like my style of comedy that I enjoy the most is that background gags kind of thing of just yeah. like over the over the ta- over the speaker there's someone being like can the parents of the boy just like spider-man please get him off of the inflatable gorilla yes <laughs> next up in great. the church in in <laughs> in the marquee it's time to judge the cakes because yeah because they, they go to like because the fate is a very british fate which is like it, it's cake stuff and then the most strange <laughs> It was the most imaginative thing to do with an egg. Was one of them. Yeah, stuff like, stuff like that. <laughs> and this one, she's like, one of them is, oh, I'm making a, a tea tray, decorative tea trays. Yes. <laughs> you know, just it's sort of like the Jamaican. Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's arts and crafts. Um, it's great. And then it would be love... jam. And then there's, there's normally like, the ones that I've been to, there's normally like, you know, biggest vegetable or best vegetable, yeah. best in show kind of. Stuff. But sometimes love... their bigger ones might have like animal like farm animals to show that that's normally like a proper farm. that proper farm show but yeah. the uh, a town fair or a village fate it's just a bit of fun um, yeah there's, a, there's fun. a little bit of racing going yeah. on 
Um, but I love the the tea the decorative tea tray. <laughs> she's, yes. she's so. This one it's is just so... card. It's just blue paper rolls with pineapple tops on them. And she's so <laughs> defeated. She's like, well, "What did you do?" I was like, "Oh, I made a tea tray, a decorative. Tea. I'm rendering decorative tea trays. I've made one for Jamaica, and it is just cardboard and and yeah. drawn." She's like, well, it could be anywhere in the it Caribbean. Could... <laughs> she's so defeated. <laughs> well, because it could um... really be anywhere in the Caribbean. <laughs> I so the re, the one way that I went to most of these fates, these village fates, was um, because I was in the CCF Corps of Drums. As I okay, um, I don't know. I I think I've sent shown you guys the photos of me in this. We wore the ugliest uniform. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the sort of the be- beigey, khaki green kind of lumps of wool, and I played the fife, which. For the uninformed, is a small shrill flute. It's not a drum. <laughs> it's a little flute. Well, there you were drums you were as well. The so drum corps. That... Yeah, well, it's, it was called the corps of drums. At the edge and... of the drum corps. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I wasn't. I, 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 the the drums was for the boys. No, I could have been a drummer if I pushed it, but I actually quite liked playing the fife. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we we play a lot of like traditional hymns and like traditional like marching. Tunes. It's always a hymn. It's a good hymn. It's a good hymn at a church fate. Yeah. Oh, what would we we do? Um. Yeah. It, that one. I only know that. I can't remember the, the the real one, but I know that the <laughs> a glory glory. What a hell of a way to die. That one. Um, I yeah. I think yeah. the the vibe of fate is gone. I've like, not been like, to one in a long time. Um, yeah, I just the closest I went to was an o- I went to the allot- the local allotment open day, and that that had pretty good fate vibes. Yeah, that's good then. It's not a vibe that should go. It's a good vibe. No, it's very chill. Yeah. But yeah, we so we were a marching band, but of course this is a static fate. So what we would do is just march around the square. <laughs> <laughs> How weirdly um, threatening! How yeah. unthreatening! <laughs> but playing like people would, it would be like we had we'd have a time, and it'd be like right now it's the <laughs> Sir Roger Man with CCF Corps of Drums, and then on we'd march and we'd play some tunes if we were, if there were enough of us because for some reason sometimes we struggled for numbers because um, <laughs> it does say like they have to catch you as you go thing. by, <laughs> like at an F one race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You kind of pick a place and like they'll be back in twenty to twenty five minutes. And depending oh. on how many of them there are, it's in stereo. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've we. I mean, I've I've been to um, marches where there's been two different um, marching bands, and you know, <laughs> rival marching bands. Oh, rival <laughs> marching bands. And they'll be like, "Oh, can you play together?" And we'll be like, "Absolutely fucking not." No, but, yeah. we're not playing. Bands. We're not playing with them. <laughs> like technically, yes, quite easily, but no. Well, actually, they, not you... necessarily easily because they'd have different instruments and we'd all play the same tunes but in different keys. Uh, did you ever march at each other? <laughs> oh, that would have been great. <laughs> just like a, just like <laughs> a, actual... what, a, de- a death wall kind of. Wall of, yeah, wall of you, the worst sounding thing. <laughs> Brit- British, British, <laughs> British, yeah, British bulldog, but yeah, with drums and fights. The worst <laughs> sounding ink thing you'll ever hear. The band that we <laughs> crossed paths with the most had these um, mounted marching glockenspiels. Wow. <laughs> so Mount shame mounted. <laughs> We'd be like all shrill and like, but at least quite loud. Whereas they'd be like tinkle, 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 tinkle. <laughs> it's like yeah, that that gives real strong military vibes. Dorks. Yeah, they were the dorks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, this uh, fate in the film, uh, we see it's Helen Mir- Mirren's character in it. She makes, well, she gets yeah, she, a yeah, sponge cake. Was, Annie was supposed to have made it, but because her husband's getting chemo, she's like been so distracted. So yeah, yeah. Chris, which is Helen Mirren, is like, it's right, I, I got one, and then she's, she's like, like, yeah, yeah, I made, I made, I made a cake and then they're like oh wow did you and they're like disbelief she's like yeah i can make a cake no i didn't make this one this one's for marks and spencers but yeah and then it wins yes yeah because it's like, not just oh. <laughs> this wi isn't this church fair or the, the summer fair is is multi cap like multi regional isn't it yeah because there's other wi's there 
Yeah. Yeah, because um, they're kind of having a having a bit, a bit of a feud with one of the other ones. Yeah. Which is wild. Um, yeah, hilarious. Is... I mean, after what I've just said about the CCF bat, like the different CCF bands, like actually, yeah, you <laughs> you can make a rival out of anything. Yeah, I just love, I just love that, like it won, and she had to go up and be like, yeah, it's I made it. <laughs> and then when a... she's t- <laughs> saying the whole, um, yeah, I learned three things from from my mum, like you know, always butter the bowl, do this, and if it's <laughs> if it's a uh, fancy event, buy it from Marks and Spencers, and just plays it off as a yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah, and eventually people start laughing. I also like that that has nothing to do with the rest of the film. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, so fun it's, bit of it's fun very bit good of, character um... setup. <laughs> yeah, it's great character. Yeah. It's the best. Fun like, bit yeah. of trivia um, is that you know we we're just talking about the the Rarestone and um, Hygel, which are the uh, other WI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those are the um, real life Women's Institute members that were the movie was based on. Oh, great! Oh, nice. <laughs> that's their that's, that's, that's their lovely. cameo. <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> which is I, I just think that's really films. cute. Yeah. I love these kinds of films because, like, so clearly, so much attention has gone into getting it right. Yes. Yeah. And I'm uh, sure they obviously amp up the drama, but they've. Ob- I mean, if they're all doing the cameo, I think there must be a level of like buy-in from the people they're making the film yeah, about. And also, so. who's going to be like, oh, oh no, I can't, <laughs> can't have Helen Mirren be me. No. <laughs> oh, how awful! You'd spend the rest of your life being like Helen Mirren played me in a film. Yeah. Oh yeah, I would milk that for all it's worth. And not just any film, a film where you get your tits out. Yeah. So yeah, they go back and and they work out that they need to raise money for to get to sort out the hot the waiting room. Yeah. And so the, they, um, yeah. the 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 calendar last year made like seventy six pounds. It made such a little amount that everyone could quote how little it was to the pence because yeah. it yeah. stuck in their minds. I think because they essentially sold like ten. Yeah, because they took pictures of fields. Yeah. Yeah, because at first they're joking about, oh, um, you know, it'd be nice to get George Clooney to do the uh, the calendar for us this yeah. year. Well, because they, the the actual suggestion is like, what if we take pictures of the churches? Yeah. Yeah. I'd much prefer George Clooney. Yeah. And then um, before John dies, he's saying like, you know, oh, I'd model for you if you wanted. We can do that. And they're like, you're but... not quite George. And then the, yeah. after he's died as well, they talk about how he loved sunflowers. That, like, speech at his... It was his funeral, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, he'd written a thing So there was, yeah, the, when, the, when, when we hear it, it's... She reads it out at the WI. Yeah. Because he was going to give a talk about sunflowers. Yeah, that was it. But he died before he could, so um, he'd written it, and they read it out. Um, but then he's... It, it's a slightly cleaned up version because we hear it before as well the the the, the first part where it's like the sunflower has glo- like phases each more glorious mm. than the last and the last is the most glorious um, and, and then you yeah, go yeah, to how ship it follows the sun and things like that <laughs> yeah and yeah, they're really like sweet. so they're in their glory they're in their final glorious stage of life because these are all quite elderly women they're yeah. not old like um but chris has a like teenage son and it's implied oh. that others have like grown up, you know. They're they're all what sixties. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think some of them are like fifties. I know the piano playing lady is. She says she's like, oh, I'm fifty five. Yeah. You know? Oh she's yeah, because yeah, she's like, I'm thingy from. If um... I'm not going to do it now. When am I going to? She's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's in um, Call the Midwife, isn't she? Don't yeah. know. I've not yeah. seen that. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's. Yeah, uh, I think that's what she's probably most famous for is um, being Phyllis Nurse Phyllis Crane. She's lovely though, Linda Bassett. I mean, every everyone in this film is is lovely. No, everyone, this is it. Yeah, it's such a well cast, well well made. But yeah, so they decide to make the calendar to sell the calendar and raise money, and to make the calendar more appealing to sell, they decide to do a nude calendar. Yeah, because yeah. Chris gets distracted by one that's in like one of the garages when the, his, her son's bike's being fixed. Yeah. And then she kind of pitches it to everyone. And everyone kind of... There's only one character, which is Ruth, who is, like, very unsure at first. But everyone else is just pretty much in straight away. Yeah, they all think it's funny, basically. Yeah. And, like... Because it, it's a joke. And then they, they eventually are like, okay, shit, we're actually going to do this. And they, they get sort of told they don't have 
approval or whatever but they're like they 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 steamroll it at this point it's sort of like yeah we're doing it we're doing it whatever and um they realize they need a photographer <laughs> and are uh, the, yes. the 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 where they they were trying to recruit this photographer and it's just a montage of them of like just the the weirdest and most surreal yeah. people <laughs> yeah. coming th- like coming through yeah. and it's like looking over this portfolio <laughs> and it's like so do you ever photograph people and it's like oh, mostly poodles <laughs> mostly poodles <laughs> yeah because yeah, they try doing it themselves don't they with like a little disposable camera and that's when yeah. chris's son <laughs> walks in and makes a jump and then when they get the pictures developed all the people at the pharmacy are laughing because it's just her tits are out like yeah she's she's behind she's behind, she's the behind, the behind fruit a fruit bowl, bowl yeah. but she's she's not she's jerked up, like jerked up because she's surprised to see her son her poor son in this as well like yeah. that's yeah. that's the sort of b one of the b plots is um her chris's relationship with her family as it develops as you know she's not leaving motherhood, but like you know, her kid's getting more independent, but also still needs her. Yeah. Um, and the husband, you know, the same is like he he needs her, but he, he wants to support her to do this, but he needs her probably yeah. more than he wants as well. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, yeah, they yeah, end up hiring yeah. the guy from the hospital as the photographer. Well, it's yeah, because the husband uh, that that died said that oh, you should look at this guy's photography; he's really good. Yeah, 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 um, and he is. So, but and is... he suggests that he, he he comes up with the idea. I don't know if this is true or not, but in the film, he comes up with the idea of it being like traditional women's institute activities, but they're nude, and yeah. they're like, "That's perfect." So it's like you know, standing in front of some iced buns, making jam, um, doing some flower, uh, like fl- um, floral arrangements, gardening, all yeah. that kind of thing, and they. Yeah. I finally agree to do it, and they're gonna have they have their first photo shoot. Well, the, the the photo shoot, and what he's supposed to do is basically he'll go in, Set arrange the shot while they're in their robe, and then leaves the room. They drop the robe. One of the girls presses the button, and the photo is taken. And they, but that just does not work. Up. No, you you can't <laughs> do that. With one of my favorite lines, which is "Get in here, Botticelli." Yeah, <laughs> well, because he's like shouting instructions <laughs> through like a keyhole he can't see yeah. through. Yeah, and uh, no. yeah, I I think like what what's really important about this film and the, that build up bit to them taking the photos is they're all talking about how like they've never been nude in front of people. Yeah, like they've they've only been naked around their husbands, or even like one of them is like he's never seen me naked. <laughs> yeah, so they then they call like a, like procreation basically like a military activity. Yeah, and it, it is like that's kind of depressing. <laughs> yeah, like watching it. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> I yeah. guess the implication for most of there's one there's one relationship that's obviously very rocky. Yeah. Um, but for the rest of them, it's more like a content level of not asexuality, but yeah. Just there's and not a lot of lot not a lot of that going on anymore. They're all happy, yeah. But there's a, this sort of essence where like they feel, I don't know, watching it, it kind of felt like none of, none of them had sort of realised that, yeah. Until they started talking about it, and it was like oh, and then you had like the, you know a lot of these people, even if they'd been absolute floozies when they were younger, have been with the same you know been with their husbands yeah. for you know twenty, thirty, forty years, yeah. And the uh, so that is player. one person seeing them naked, essentially. Yeah, and then the piano player was like, well, if I'm not doing it now, when am I going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's great. Like, I love that. That sort of arc of them getting comfortable. And then, yeah, it's just calling the photographer in to actually take the photo. And then the, the montage of them taking the photos is brilliant. Yeah, I like how it's like sort of intercut with all of the husbands just sitting in the pub like, it's <laughs> having it gives, a drink. Like, gives, oh, they're yeah, not going to go yeah. through with it. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. The, um, and then Ruth the... kind of bucks up the courage to come and, and do her shot as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, when they all walk in and they're like, oh, he's like, oh, Ruth's doing the next one. And they're like, what? And they all go into the <laughs> shed because it's the gardening <laughs> photo. Yeah. And she's just necking a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like she'll get through it, but yeah. Yeah. Her sort of side plot is that her husband's constantly going away um on business like sort of trips. Yes. Which obviously. She she knows she knows he's cheating on. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like she knows, but it's more like um she's in denial, I think. Yeah. At the start and then it's 
you know, it comes becomes harder and harder. He basically just is pushing it further and further. So like she un- until she can't deny what's happening. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. She has her photo, and then Helen Mirren has hers. And yeah, the Helen Mirren one is interesting because she's very like pro everyone else getting naked in a sort of encouraging way, and then it gets to her and she hesitates. And she's like, oh, I want privacy. And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah, they just start chatting off. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, um, yeah, it's quite nice. I like how all the pictures have a sunflower in them as well as that kind yeah. of yeah. Like, thing towards John. Yeah. And... It's sweet. Yeah. And they're also, and then... they are smiling. Most, uh, the, the, <laughs> they're all smiling in the photos as well. They're not mm-hmm. like, they're not, I mean, they're quite cheeky. Um, yeah. But a lot of the, the smiles are genuine, and they're like they're really nice photos. Yeah, the teacher one is fucking hilarious. Yeah, when he sets so he sets up the like all of the women naked facing the teacher, and the teacher sat on the chair, and it, it she's like she starts having to go at the photographer, and it turns out that like she was his teacher. Yeah, and he, <laughs> just, he just walks out the room, and they'll start admonishing runs. her for upsetting him. <laughs> And oh, they do so like funny. the the Christmas the Christmas one is they're all doing with their carol sheets. Yeah. Um, so it's all, and then there's another one where they're all fake, like someone's giving a talk like WI style, but they're all yeah. everyone's naked, including all the audience, which is all which is just all of them, and then the person at the front with the well placed um, lector lector. Yeah. <laughs> it's so all, it's great. It's lovely. Yeah. So they have a lot of fun doing that, and then once it's done, they kind of realise that it's going to cost a lot of money to actually print it. Yeah. So they're like, "Oh, we need we need a sponsorship. We need to get some money, <laughs> like for it." Yeah. Um. And the the main woman, the head of their women's institute, is very against it as well because she's yeah, like, it's not it's... very traditional." <laughs> well, she's like basically like you're gonna uh, you're gonna ruin the Napoli name. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, is Helen Mirren's character called Chris, isn't it? Isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris and the other one. I'm so bad with names. Annie. 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 Yeah, Chris Chris goes out to get sponsorship. And she comes back with, like, a beer sponsorship. Yeah, that's the first. This is, like, the, one of the turning points in the relationship with what Helen wants. Or what, yeah, sorry, what Chris wants versus what Annie wants. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Chris, well, Chris just wants to get it made originally. Yeah. She's like, we'll do anything to just get it made because it's going to raise money. Whereas Annie wants to honor her husband. Yeah, and like, do so it she's properly. like, he didn't even like beer. Like they, they originally they want wait, basically they wanted the sofa company to sponsor yeah. them because that would have, yeah, I think or, that would have been like really a seed nice. company. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it seed? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're not interested. Yeah. So yeah, Chris goes out finds a beer company and Annie's like, he didn't drink beer. Why? It's like, we just need it made. We just need the money in to get it made. And it's like, mm. I kind of get, I get both. And you meant to. <laughs> yeah, neither's yeah. wrong. They're both no. like entitled to their opinion. But ultimately, um, it, this is the start of Chris like steamrolling the operation. Yeah. Um, yeah, because and... Chris kind of sees the opportunities. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, is it Mary has gone to the main sort of women's institute in London and has like essentially banned them from releasing it so they need to go to the London one to try and talk them around. Yeah. And it yeah, turns out it's literally they... in front of the whole like conference. Yes, people. they're all there. <laughs> yeah, because like... they're like, well we can't we we can't use if we can't use the WI name we get have to get them all reprinted and we've not got any more money to reprint it. So they, they have to get permission basically. Otherwise yeah. like that. And the, the it's really not WI possible. essentially say well, we can't stop you. It's entirely up to. We don't want to stop you. It's entirely up to your like local. Yeah. W-I. Yeah, because it's only at, at that point they're like, well, it's just a small local thing. So yeah. yeah. And so the speech that she gives is really because Julie or well, Julie Waters Annie tries to give a speech about how much it means to her husband, but she can't really get the words out. And then Helen Mirren takes charge, but this time not, not in like a horrible way. But they're trying to no. say, oh, you've had your you've had your two minutes or whatever to make your case. That's it. That's all you get. And she's like, no, 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 no. And yeah, so they they all decide to after having making them wait for ten minutes, and then like, yeah, do, like we we won't stop you. 
Um, it's just down to the local. And even the local woman's like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. She knows when she's beaten. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So they go ahead and get them made. Yes. Yeah, and they have a um, sort of press release uh, planned. And then when they first go in, there's no one there. And she's like, yeah, oh, that bit's fuck. so heartbreaking when yeah. she's like, I fucked yeah. it up. I, you know, no, I've, I've, not only have I not raised money, I've, we've lost money. Yeah, it's another one of my harebrained ideas. It's they imply that there's like she's got a bit of a reputation for having done not this in the past, but like maybe having ideas was, that haven't worked out. I think the last one they say like explicitly was she did a vodka taste in evening. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I mean, I think that sounds like a brilliant idea for yeah. what I mean. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she's sad because like, yeah, no one turned up and it's such a waste. And then someone comes in and he's like, no, they're, they're in a different room. There's more the people than we anticipated. And it is just massive. Yeah, it's full of, of media and press and uh, it's so yeah. nice. And then there's just like journalists all over. <laughs> I like the bit where um, the, I can't remember the like older lady's name. And she like goes up to... Helen Mirren, so she's like, I brought my journalist to meet your journalist. <laughs> yeah, because it becomes a bit of a, this This is what happens pretty much straight away, is it becomes a sensation. Mm. Yeah. Um, but in like, in a, in a nice way at this point. Uh, like, everyone's thrilled. Helen Mirren's like being hounded by journalists, but in a very British way. Well, it's and, like the fun story yeah. type news. Yeah. At this point, it's like fun local Callan, local women do a nude calendar. Yeah. And yeah, at this point it's just fun and nice. And they get, start getting fan mail from people. And it's yeah, really this, nice. is, this is the sweet, the sweetest part, is especially the scene where, like, because they share them. Obviously, a lot of them are sent to Annie, and she, yeah. she shares them with, with everyone. And they're so, they're so sweet. There's like, this is the first time I've, because a lot of them are from widows. Yeah. Um, like Annie. So it's like, She's like, I, th- I didn't re- like, I, I don't feel alone anymore. Like this, this happens to so many of us. Yeah, it's so sweet. And it's just, oh God, it made me really choke up. And they're like, this is the first time I'd laughed since the funeral. This is the first, like, you made me feel like there's yeah. something, you know, that it, yeah, it isn't def- all over. Definitely did a little cry at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I know that my, they're like my husband, my friend, my wife, my would have howled with laughter at these photos. Yeah, uh, kind of bit. and it oh yeah, it's a real tearjerker scene, but in a, in a, such a nice way. Yeah, and then yeah, it goes. The story goes all wild, and it's like everywhere. Everyone's interested in talking about it and like talking to them. Um, and then you see the school laughing about it. Yeah, so the y- their son's getting it in the neck. Cause obviously, his mum's got his b- b- babs out, and like yeah. everyone's got a copy. I can understand that being possibly the worst thing that can happen to you when you're a teenager. Yeah, hundred percent. Like everyone's seen your mum's boobs, especially yeah. in is this two thousand and three? Three. It's two thousand three. Yeah. I don't know when the real story actually happened, but yeah, probably like the late nineties. Uh, but... but yeah, he's like being laughed at loads in school, um, and then Ruth's husband gets back and he's like just pissed off at her because he like obviously she stripped down for it as well, and yeah. he just storms off, and she's just like. Upset that he's gone, but I think this is the point where she's realising she doesn't need him and he's a twat. <laughs> so twat. Honestly, everyone can just get the fuck over it real quick. Like, yeah. <laughs> watching that part of this film where, like, everyone's having trouble with it. I'm sorry, get the fuck over it. Yeah, um, yeah most, of the, most of the husbands are f- more than fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even even Chris is like so he ends up it ends up becoming a bit more of a, a plot point. He's chatting to this random guy who's like collecting some of the flowers from their company and he's yeah. just like, Yeah, you know, I'm I'm happy for her, like, you know, those people saying it's, you know, amped up their sex life. It's not really happened for me, but you know, it's it's whatever. Yeah, you say for some for yeah. some of them like this is yeah. re- reawakened the girls. Yeah. yeah. He's he's um, just having a casual conversation with someone. Yeah, and then that person takes a picture of him. Well, he's like, oh, so who am I talking to, Mr... And then it's like, yeah, I'm Mr. January. Yeah. By the way, ethically fucked, that journalist. Well, yeah, 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 he works for the News of the World, which is, you know, The Sun, so checks out. I I genuinely don't know if he'd be allowed to publish that. I think Uh, there are, like, some protections where you have to tell someone. Unless it's, like, in specific people, I think you have to tell the general public that you're a journalist. There's like ethical stuff. 
But it's fucked. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, fucked like I say, the guy works for the I mean, sun. He's not going to yeah, be ethical. Journalists not break. Journalists breaking the rules is, uh, yeah, unfortunately, and especially at that time. This is before anyway. the whole um, like um, answer phone thing. Like, yeah, yeah. no scrup. There are no scruples. Yeah. No, exactly. Also, I probably wouldn't call the like the son and news of the world people journalists either. To be fair, yeah, it's g- generous, generous term. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so they... it all sort of blows up, and they get. A, they it turns out that they are going to Hollywood to tell a story on. Uh, like, well, yeah, cause they get offered to like an American company calls them up, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to do yeah. it over the telephone." It's like, no, we we have to do it in person. Yeah. So they, they get to fly they get to Hollywood. Flown, they get flown to Hollywood and yeah. it's so exciting. Which, the the plane, the the airport bit is so, mm. it's so funny because, mm. so they get up to the airport, the, the woman at the desk, and they're like, oh, what way do we go? Like, we are, we've asked 10 people, we've been pointed in your direction, and she's like, sorry, you, you can't book your flight here. You can't get your flight here. And they're all like having a go at her fucking obviously because they're frustrated yeah, they're... and we're trying to get on mm. a plane and the woman behind the desk is like you've already been booked on a first class yeah, yeah like you've been you've been upgraded you don't need to check in why like, not we'll take... lead with that yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh, and it's just just before this as well ruth goes off to where her husband's going yeah and finds um a lady who's on eastenders that he's cheating on that's where with. she's yeah. from yeah um <laughs> And she was like, "Oh, he told great. me she, you were dead." <laughs> like, yeah, it's like he, she, he told me you were a carpet salesman, and she's like, "He told me you were dead." That lady is not is upset enough with the guy with with her partner, no. her boyfriend. No, she's just when she finds out he's she's the other him. woman. Yeah. But Ruth yeah. is just like, "I'm off to Hollywood." Fuck yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. And she's Don't... like, "Who? Who is? Everyone got their passports. Everyone got their um, tickets. Oh uh, yeah, got a che- because... cheating bitch of a husband." Because <laughs> yeah. at first Chris isn't going to go because yeah. her son's having trouble in school. Her husband's like, and well, it's her when son's she... got arrested for smoking weed, even though he and he gets off because it turns out he'd only managed to buy oregano. Oregano, yeah. the which one of my favourite jokes in the entire film is like the only thing that would be a crime in is um, <laughs> a quiche. Like a, it's so yeah, it's a quiche. <laughs> Love that line. And the dad brings it back again later, and he's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the quiche, and he's still stoned. <laughs> <laughs> loved it um but yeah the yeah. um annie points out quite quite rightly like no your your family needs you like they're they're struggling your son even though he didn't use drugs he tried to yeah, yeah. and, and he had been having a real rough why. time being bullied at school and, and it's yeah. like yeah. they need to she was like you need to get to the bottom of this and she's like i know you're right and um she stays but then the newspaper published news of the world publishes that her husband and her husband aren't having sex basically it's like but it's like blown out like you know no sex yeah, for yeah. mr january and like it's all splashed across the papers and she, and she ups leaves. she immediately like leaves not like leaves him as in divorces him but leaves no. him to go she to hollywood and America. like meets the girls there um yeah. it turns point? out they're in a massive hotel and they end up on the jet they're on the jay leno show <laughs> Ah, uh, they're all yeah. yeah they're all call, like calling each other on the on the hotel phones, being like, "I'm in the bath, <laughs> I'm in the bath, dude. I, <laughs> the bath love, bubbles are Dior." I love when she's like, "Oh my, uh, she's being shown around by by someone, and she's like, oh, my feet hurt. I just want to go to my room.'" And he's like, "This is your room." Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's like the massive two story apartment. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's the very... master suite of the the hotel. I don't know if it's like a famous hotel or not because I don't yeah, know enough about know. Hollywood. But it was, yeah, it was fancy pants. It was, yeah, it, it, it is very realistic. What well, the way they would respond? Yeah. <laughs> and um, um, so yeah, it but... turns out that while they're over there, they've been asked to do um, an advert for like so they can get sponsorship money to actually launch the calendar in America. They've got to do this like laundry detergent advert or something. Well, they um, they also like they do the Jay Leno show, and it is hmm. the blandest interview. Yeah, it's just kind of him making some jokes, and they get shuffled on and shuffled off. Hmm. And they're like, they're really happy with it, but yeah, it wasn't didn't do anything. <laughs> no, no, um, it's just a but, fun piece. Yeah, while they're in this like huge, um, like massive uh, studio and that, and the guys like, right, you're all gonna strip off and do this laundry thing, and they're like, w- what? Like, no. <laughs> That's but not yeah, that's what, what you do. Yeah, um, that's what you do. 
and so Annie storms out. Um, Chris follows her, and okay, right. This is incredibly off track, but <laughs> okay. so they storm out and they're walking through the the studios, right? And as they're walking through the studios, a bunch of men dressed as Romans walk past. Mm-hmm. Why is it in so many movies? Because I'm sure it's happened in more than just this. When they're walking through studios like that, for some reason, there's always people dressed as Romans. <laughs> I feel like it happens a lot. And it's I don't probably know like an in joke or like a a thing. Yeah, it sounds Roman like it could, be a, it could be a thing for sure. Yeah, yeah. Or like or it, it, it might are... genuinely have been like, who have we got to be the background for this? <laughs> or what what costumes does the props team have? Yeah, yeah. Like it might just be that Roman that's like recognisable as a as a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, Roman costumes know, are just that easy to get a hold of. Yeah, they're just acting as Rome. They're, like every yeah, single everywhere. movie that comes out, they're making three hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know three hundred's not Roman. Don't at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're marching through. I love them getting lost at a like a film set. Yeah, and they're just because it would be the worst street. place. The worst place to get lost is on a film set. Yeah, and they're like shouting, and they're like, no, 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 no shh. <laughs> like, yeah. It sounds fun as that, but um, it's a really the argument it, is a real... It's been building for so long. Yeah. And it's... What happens is Annie confesses that she doesn't... It, it's not about the money for, for her. Like, she feels like a fraud, essentially, because she would give away all of the money in an instant. Not give Such. away, as in as in get rid of it. Just for, for another five minutes it, with her husband. It's such a... That comment is so good and it's so yeah. like brutally honest yeah and it's it's the 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 line that i really liked as well is where she's like um you didn't make the calendar famous the calendar made you famous yeah yeah and it's that Even kind of point that hits chris of like oh fuck <laughs> like yeah. you know but yeah like you've made I, you've made a success you've made a success out of you yeah yeah but I, I love the argument of like when annie says you've got you still got your husband like you've still got yeah. your your and husband. And you're here. I yeah, yeah. I would steal all of the money because they were they learned that they were, they raised like two hundred thousand, and she's like, oh, I would steal all that money for five more minutes with my husband. And I'm like, that is such a hard, honest line. Yeah, because she's like, and, oh, you know, did you actually stay to find out why that was printed in the newspaper? Did you actually talk to? Yeah, your like, so you've you've, you you've, you've left John off? to deal with all of this then by by himself. Yeah, yeah. Like she really, and it's it's one of those things that only your best friend could tell could say to you. Yeah, but she's like, no, yeah. I'm calling you out on your shit right now. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's you need so, to yeah. get your act together. It, and it's she's a... right. She's she's absolutely yeah. right. She needs to, and her family does need her, and she. Yeah, it's such a great moment in the film because that is just like everything boiling over. Yeah, and they make and great not, like. And it's, it's the grief as well. And it's, just it's the acknowledging two. that he's really hmm. gone, and yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's not that. I know I'm going to mention again that moment where she said, "I'd take it all for five more minutes." It's something that I feel like everyone that has gone through grief feels, and but no one really likes to talk about it because it's really selfish. And yeah. I think that like, I mean, most it, people don't have the opportunity to raise no. thousands of pounds of money. In the but name he... of that, so it doesn't come up, I guess. But yeah, yeah, that that selfishness of like, well, I don't. None of this feels meaningful to me because this person isn't there. I think yeah. it's really. And genuine, you would, yeah, you would like do a lot. Like you would take money to, you would steal money to spend more time with them. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's not to admit that is a lot. Yeah, for a person to do. <laughs> Um, um, oh, yeah. but it's so well acted as well. Yeah, like, it's so you believe every earnest. second of it. Mm. Yeah, and yet this film is built on its acting. If it didn't have this caliber, and like when you say this caliber of acting, it is literally the <laughs> highest caliber. This of is top tier. <laughs> this is everyone's in it. But like, whilst it's fun, it is yeah. like when 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 they get down to it, like you you're like, yeah. oh yeah, these are proper actors. Yeah, like this is this isn't just like oh thingy in a film. This is like this is award winning Shakespearean, yeah. like <laughs> f- classically trained actors doing their fucking best. Like this is it. 
Yeah, uh, like you're like, so you know, in, invested in their relationship, in her relationship with the, like Chris's relationship with her family, with her like with the, the, her relationship with the WI, with all the women's relationships with their bodies. Yeah, like I'm I'm just fully fully invested yeah. at this point. I cried during this bit. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it it's is so good. it's so good. And yeah, then they go home because they realize that like it's a bit fucked. What's going on? Yeah, they're yeah. like we're we're not. We're, they they don't do the commercial. They don't care. They 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 basically I think like they're like the guy we've raised enough. Like let's go yeah, home. yeah, they're happy with what they've done. They they go home. Also, the advert wasn't like it was to get just another sponsorship to be able to sell the calendar in the US. Yeah, I think and so. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah I think that's all it was for. Yeah, and it's like if they're just a, you know doing this like naked advert hanging washing on the line yeah that's not what they want to do it's not what they did it for they're not they didn't want to sell out doing it yeah. the goal was to buy a new the, sofa a new the goal sofa. was to buy a sofa which if they raised a thousand pounds they could get it in leather yeah <laughs> in like a nice oh that scene is so good though at the st- uh, it's yeah uh, yeah where they're they pitching the idea it, and it turns out they're in the sofa shop because it just looks like they're in someone's living room yeah. yeah and then the guy like the salesman comes mm-hmm. around and is like so what do you think exactly. and they all just kind of leave and he's like oh, tight <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think then they get back and then they learn how much money they've raised. Yeah, because they get back. Chris, um, Chris talks to her husband and he's like, you know, I, uh, the only reason I've not said anything is because I've wanted you to do this. I'm really proud of you for doing all this. Like, it yeah. doesn't actually bother me. I Again. didn't know that guy was a journalist. <laughs> like, if everyone can yeah. get the fuck over it real and he's quick. Like, and he, and yeah. he's also points out, like, he's a te- your son's a teenager, he's a boy. I've told him. You know, this is important. He will understand eventually. Like you, you don't need to worry. Like it's it's okay. Yeah, very yeah. normal for him to feel this way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but he w- and it's like eventually he will get on side and be proud of you the way that I am. Yeah. Yeah. And he's and like, I think he, you're amazing. Yeah. And then yeah, so she goes back into the the WI where they she like sort of sits down next to Annie and this they, they're like yeah so far you've raised two hundred eighty six thousand. And she just turns yeah. to her and is like, "Well, we can buy the sofa in the leather then." And it's like, <laughs> "That's all. That's all they needed to be it's, like, okay." Because yeah. she asks her husband, like, to... "What? What? What do I say to Annie? What can I? What can I possibly do to make it up to her?" And it's like, "She's your best friend. You don't need to say anything." And it sounds yeah. like that in a way you'd be like, "Oh no, she does need to apologize." But it's like, "Well, no, actually, like she already knows how sorry she is. Like yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. It when it doesn't need to say doesn't mean that it she isn't sorry. It just means that we, they understand each other." It yeah, there's over. there's no scene where they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, but it's yeah. like no, they just they kind of yeah, they're back on the same page. They they. Know I also that it's not, I absolutely yeah. love because this is such. I don't know if this is a British thing or just a human thing. Everyone in the WI sits in the exact same seat every week, and that is yeah. exactly how it is for like everything. Oh, any any organized event <laughs> that <Yeah>. happens regularly. <laughs> like we have hot desking at work, except we do not. Yeah, same. You have hot desking. <laughs> And then someone goes, oh, it's on so-and-so's desk. You're like, it's not technically their desk. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah I, I've had to move desks recently, and I'm, I'm not sure about it, you know. I'm <laughs> not, not I'm not sold just yet. <laughs> yeah. I think with uh, the, the relationship in this, between Annie and, and Chris, it, like, it's over. Like, the, what's happened, what the argument was about, it's done. Yeah. There's no yeah. need to... The, at that point, there is no need to apologize. Because... Ju- um, Julie Waters has said what she need- and he said what she needed to say. Uh, that she yeah. that took her a long time, and Chris has done what she needed to do, yeah. as in go and make mm. right with her family and appreciate her husband, and you know, and they've already rein stopped. it in. Yeah, yeah, and they've already stopped being in America and trying to get the deal, the the sponsorship, and it's done. It's over. They don't have to apologize to each other. Yeah. They just keep going and do whatever they want to do next. Yeah, so they, it ends with like to date, I don't know, 2003, uh, it was already over half a million pounds. Yeah, God knows they, how much they, it is now. Yeah, they, yeah. they'd and, raised like enough to get a, a whole new leukemia unit in the local hospital. Like, yeah. Well, and which, a sofa. Yeah. They do buy a sofa as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, it, this film is so lovely. Yeah. It's it's such a yeah. It's a it's a real. It, I haven't seen it. I think since I was a kid, but it's one that I've thought of quite a 
quite a bit. Yeah. Over the years, I think it's or not only do obviously these are just some of the the actors that I grew up with. Oh yeah. But it is such a British film. Like yeah, I don't it, know if it would necessarily work in another in another culture in another country. I don't think you could. No, I don't think you could be like take it and remake it in America. But I think it it would appeal to like American audiences because it because it's so British and it's such a like I I, I always describe this kind of film as like soft British realism because mm. mm. you get like the the like the really harsh really fucking depressing british realism oh yeah yeah there's nothing apart from obviously the cancer sucks in this but that's you know yeah that's really that's real that happened and it was always in his memory and, but it's um, not it's not like a violent awful thing like it's an awful yeah. thing but it's not like a violent aggressive thing yeah and there's no yeah. like undercurrent of that obviously there's loads of there's loads of gritty british films and this isn't gritty no. This is, you know, soft. smooth, <laughs> soft, yeah. velvety. It's, soft. it's a velvety British <laughs> Like thing. in Marks and Spencer's Victoria Sponge. Yeah. Like, like they never, <laughs> they never, they're, they're never like in a moment where they're breaking down and like hysterically crying. Yeah. They're no. No, like the, the most British realism, gritty British realism thing I can think of is someone's not in a kind of small kitchen having a breakdown and crying. Like, that's the most gritty British realism thing I can think of. <laughs> and this, I mean, it is very middle class. These are all comfortably retired or, yeah. um, you know, near near retired ladies. Yeah. It's, um, it's soft and friendly and it's just lovely. And it's so well, and it's so, it had to be well acted. Yes. It just if had it had to been, be. If it had been like a farce or a slapstick, it wouldn't have worked. But I think because it is so genuine... Yeah, and the comic you... relief because it's so passionate. Like the comic relief, I think, is really necessary, but really nice as well because it does yeah. break up that like it's very emotional. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but it is it's also silly, and they know it's silly. Like it is supposed to be a jokey, like funny calendar. They are not models. Yeah. I mean, they they all look brilliant, but you know, they're it's not their. You know, this this isn't like young, sexy women posing. And, you know, they've got wrinkles no. and they're old and... It's a fun joke. Oh, it's we're going to need bigger fun... buns was an yeah. excellent line. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, like, it's it's body positivity to to what it should be yeah. and what it is. Like, there's no reason for them to not do it and they can do it in that sort of cheeky, <laughs> wink, wink kind of way. Yeah. And, the, and the photographer isn't sleazy at all. If, no. if anything, like... He He's puts up with a hell of a lot from these women. <laughs> he, By the end he, of the night, they are quite drunk. <laughs> yeah. Also, like he's he's the complete opposite. Like he he won't be in the room with them to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. He does, it's and he wants, but he wants it to be art- artistic. And they're like, yeah, it's not naked, it's nude. And that's one of the yeah. things they're like, how do we make this tasteful? And they're like, well, what makes what makes like Venus de, uh, de Milo art? And this, you know, this whatever pornography, and it's like, well, the artist, and that's when they're like, yeah, we'll get get a professional yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, and that's how they convince people to do it. Is they're like, it's not, it's not naked, it's nude. Oh, I'd recommend watching it, especially if you, well, if you are British or if you're not British, it's, yeah, I'd like to think that there are still village fairs out there. That uh, yeah, I just imagine similar. a slightly yeah. different vibe. I think those are gonna. Uh, not die a death anytime soon. Some of the bigger ones I went to had like the really scary little theme park rides as well. You know, like the oh, really yeah, the rickety ones. That are, ones. Like, held together with duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ones that, re- yeah, <laughs> sway with the breeze. You know, you know, when you're, you know, when you were younger and you went to them and you went, that's been here for, you've been using that since the fate started. And you're, <laughs> you go there now and you're like, they're still using the same thing. <laughs> I'm it like, what old... if it was going to break? It would have broken by now. Yeah, yeah. That was always my logic as a kid. As an adult, fuck that. But, not um, going anywhere. <laughs> nowhere near, near that. <laughs> Best case scenario, you get tetanus. Yeah, that's um, such a wonderful. It, it does film. make me, it wants me go to make it does make me want to go to a little village fate though. Yeah, like we have a, similar things in Birmingham, like stall, like markets, and um, there was oh there was a very tragic money raising attempt the other day. It was a little street party, and it got absolutely. Um, 
wiped out by the rain. Oh. I felt really bad because they had so much outdoor stuff planned. Oh no. <laughs> and it was just one of the photos I saw was like someone trying to do karaoke in this absolute town pool. Amazing. <laughs> And it's like, there's only so much you can put under one flimsy gazebo. <laughs> That's always good, though. I mean, like, local community events are always fun. Yeah, I, I, I'm involved in my local community a bit more and more each year, and um, I really enjoy it. Yeah. And obviously you're involved in your local community. Yeah. And Dan's just, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, the local community fair is happening on the road next to mine so you know go I enjoy go it. to that yeah yeah i was about to name it and then i was like wait no don't do that yeah <laughs> everyone go to their fair everyone go have fun go to their yeah. local fair bring an umbrella local fate yeah because it'll probably rain <laughs> yeah. the amount of ccf ones i did in the rain oh yeah and Nobody like, it rains i'm performing to like five disinterested mums yeah. and a donkey <laughs> It rains too often in this country for it to put anyone off. Yeah. Bad yeah well, but there's, there's, certain, there's a level of rain. But anyway, ten out. Uh, this is a 10 out of 10 film for me. 10 out of 10. I couldn't... Considering how long it's been since I watched it, like, the nostalgia obviously hits really hard, but also I'd forgotten most of the plot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that it's complicated, but... I had such a lovely time just chilling out and watching this, like, solid Sunday afternoon... Yes, that's it. That's the film. It's a Sunday afternoon film. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I can't like it's aged really well. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, there is like absolutely nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's there's weird. no, there's, there's not a lot of diversity. <laughs> I guess is one thing that I think yeah. if it was made these days. But it is also Skipton, which I don't believe is a particularly diverse part yeah, of the country. Yeah, it's a you know little village in Yorkshire, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, it's not even it's not even Skipton, is it? That's the big that's the big city. Nearby. Yeah, it, it's like Napley. Yeah, Napley. It's literally just a little village. Yeah. But ah, uh, yeah, it's it's harmless fun, really, and I think that's yeah. the, the key. Is like they do something really brave, and it doesn't hurt anyone, and it all works out in the end, and it's a genuinely yeah. true story. Yeah. And I don't think they've strayed massively. I mean, I'm sure they they added. The drama side of it is, yeah, probably whatever, because um, they've got to have a bit of interest. Yeah, I think I think I agree. I think it's a ten out of ten, but because I can't think of anything not great about it. Like it's well written, it's fucking amazingly acted, it's well put together, it's such a lovely story, it's so sweet and wholesome, and it all pays off. So I think like ten, uh, M and S. <laughs> Marks and Spencer's cakes out of ten. Yeah, oh it's yeah, it's definitely ten of those yum yum buns. Yep. <laughs> those ice those those oh no the they're Chelsea buns, I think, aren't they? With the, the white with the red glacé cherries. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which are just boob that they're just they're they're just boob cakes. <laughs> boob buns. Yeah. Dan, what food yeah. is it for you? <laughs> oh no, I I mean I I mean I wasn't gonna give it a ten, I was gonna give it an eight. Um still you know, really you enjoyable, hate women. really glad I watched it. <laughs> I mean, it's not one that I'd be like, you know, rushing to watch again, but I'm glad that I've properly sat down and watched it now. But I'm going to give it um, 8 out of 10 uh, giant gorilla balloons. Um, it loses yeah, two but... points because the giant gorilla balloon wasn't in it for longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, there's, no, there's no reprieve of the giant gorilla no. balloon. It doesn't no. come back at why, the end. Why didn't the giant gorilla balloon get, get a page in the calendar? <laughs> <laughs> I could have at least been in the background. Well, like you know, they they could be standing behind it, or they could do the like a like a King Kong sort of thing. <laughs> sure, there's loads of opportunities to use the giant gorilla balloon more. <laughs> but no, I did I did really enjoy this. I'm glad that I sat down and watched it. Yeah, there's like, so, yeah. yeah, there's so many throwaway lines that just made me giggle the whole way through. I remember they're doing um, the the pianist, um, the lady that because they always sing Jerusalem. Yeah. And uh, that's just a WI thing. It's their like mantra. Um, but she plays it on the piano, and everyone sort of, you know, it's very shrill. But they, everyone sings it. And then when she's playing the piano for her photo, she's like, "Oh, is it? I didn't know it was in E flat." And she's like, makes a mistake. She's like, "Well, I'll be disappointed if they're looking at my fingers." Hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just great. 
Well, it was nice um, to have watched a, a a nice sort of, I guess, feel good film. <laughs> definitely like, feel good. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's yeah, it's lovely, and I I I would recommend it um for when you want a nice, just a film that just can wash over you, but you make you feel some things. Yeah. Yeah. But not it's not like a tearjerker like all the way through, but when it is, it is it hits quite hard. <laughs> Yeah. Well, with that, I have been Dan. I have been Michael. And I've been Helena. Uh, you can find this podcast on social media at Hilton Pod. That's at H I L T M Pod. We're on Discord as well. If you want to come, come and tell us what what your feelings about this film are. And also, how far into recording this episode did you guys realize what we have to do for the Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can guess what we're going to do for the Patreon. Um, oh. And we're not going to do that. <laughs> I hope you're looking not, forward to our Hilton pod calendar, which is 12 pictures that. of a giant gorilla balloon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, guys, we're going to start a, a, a community fate. <laughs> the Hilton pod <laughs> community fate. And we're going to do... We need a marquee balloon. and a gorilla balloon. Yeah, giant gorilla balloon. <laughs> and gonna, M&S I've, sponge I've, cake. <laughs> yeah, these are easy to... They're easy to to organize we're gonna have baking competitions and it's gonna be nice and sweet and kind <laughs> and friendly and for no and reason sweet. whatsoever a ccf band will perform headed by helena yeah obviously yes. yeah on the oh fun. if i'm the leader does that mean i get to wear like a big uh sash and have a big long stick yeah but if we're going by calendar girls that is all <laughs> <laughs> uh actually no we think we're doing um giant gorilla costume (laughs) and i've just got my face and my tits cut out oh the seagulls are back (laughs) and pause for seagulls (laughs) no we just read with that funny (laughs) <laughs> the seagulls might be a permanent fixture, I'm afraid. The seagulls are our audience. Yeah. <laughs> a live studio audience. Hey, I love that movie, the only podcast for birds. <laughs> for birds, by birds. <laughs> that sounds like a sexist podcast advert. That sounds really sexist, yeah. Like a northern <laughs> sexist advert. Birds only podcast, yeah. Is a per- it's a podcast for birds by birds. We can talk about bird stuff. Periods, mostly. <laughs> okay, right, ready to get started? <laughs> no, I'm not. I've got that in my head now. <laughs> oh, I tell you, our birds aren't particularly noisy, but our squirrels properly shout. And last night, Jim and I both got woken <laughs> <Oi>! up. <laughs> both got woken up by the loudest <laughs> fox sex I've heard yeah, in that. ages. <laughs> It was real, like, murder sounds. Yeah, Oof. you kind of... There's a well, worry when you live. You never know. <laughs> well, yeah, we were yeah. like, is someone dying or are some foxes having a good time? <laughs> I get that in the countryside. I'm slightly worried that people are getting murdered and everyone's just like, eh, it's foxes. Oh, it's probably foxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just foxes, it's fine. You know. but yeah, have Actually, you ever heard squirrels? Because I didn't know the sound squirrels make until I moved to this estate, which has, like, thousands of squirrels. No. <laughs> They go. It cut you off there, and that's funny. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll do. I'll try and do it quieter. Nope, still cut you off. (laughs) (laughs) No, Discord has an anti-squirrel system built into it. Fucking rude. Okay, well then, enjoy that when you edit. Yeah, I shall do. (laughs) Mikey, you'll never know. Yeah. They sound a bit like crows, but like throatier. Huh. Anyway. <laughs>